funny. Yes. Are you ready for everyone's favorite podcast segment, the free form ad libbing uh, uh, edge of our seat pulled out of our ass? Uh, everyone's favorite podcast segment, Bunny Versus, starring the incomparable Bunny Williams. Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you revved up and ready to go, Bunny? Yes. Okay, then. Without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny. And I'm completely drawing a blank of everything that happened the whole previous week. Uh, I wrote some stuff down, so that's mm. good. I forgot to talk about Halloween Kills. Not that I had a lot left to say about Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills suffers from trilogy-itis. And what happens is, we have an idea for a trilogy. Three movies. But we're not sure if people want to see a trilogy. So what we'll do is, we'll release the first movie as a standalone movie that has a beginning and a middle and an end inside of its own little universe. And if people like this one movie... Then we'll make two movies that are together. Yeah. You have to see together. And so that's why uh, Star Wars, great movie. Empire Strikes Back, there's no ending to that. No. And it's, that happens with so many trilogies. The Matrix, a great standalone film. Then you see the second one, and it's like, oh, this, all this does is lead to the third. Yeah. That is, that is all, this film only exists to steer you towards the final film a in the third trilogy. third that didn't even pay off. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> that's the problem with Halloween <coughs> Kills, because the next film is coming out next year, and that's going to wrap up this three-movie trilogy. So the first Halloween film from 2018 was great, but then this one is just like, oh, Things happen. Watch the third, yeah. and then that's it. And it just sucks, you know? Well, the thing about this is is, is it was kind of weird because, like, I really wasn't planning on seeing Halloween Kills because I heard enough people say it sucked for me to say, all right, I believe you, you know? Yeah. yeah. But then I sign up for Peacock so I can watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade and I go to Peacock, and there's Halloween Kills. And I actually felt, like, really disappointed. That Halloween it's like, Kills it's like, I don't want to watch this movie, but, like, I have to now. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. right there. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I now feel obligated to watch this movie. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever felt that way with a movie that's like been made available to me like that. Hmm. Where I was actively upset that I was having an, I was getting the opportunity to see a movie. Yeah. So, so much of the film was just setting up another film that isn't even out yet and it's so upsetting and it, like the policeman's in the hospital and it's like you don't understand. Michael is still alive because of me. And I'm going to tell you my story. And there's going to be a flashback. And that will set up the fact that I am going to fight and give my life to make sure that Michael Myers is stopped once and for all. But not in this movie. Bye! And then he j his character just disappears and you don't see him again. Yeah. And then Laurie Strode, the entire movie is, Michael and I are going to fight. Michael and I are going to fight. Michael and I are going to fight. Not now. Bye! And, and then, like, oh, so why was I, why was, if that was all just setting up shit that didn't happen yet. Yeah, I, like. Like, fuck this movie. Yeah. And, and it was just, it was just, it was overly dramatic and silly. Yeah. You know, like. I like, never, I never, I never would have thought that 
when you're talking about the Halloween movie franchise, I never thought that I would say about a Halloween movie that guy who played Stuart in Mad TV was the best part of this Michael Myers movie. Oh my God! Yeah, I know. I was looking at him. I was what looking at him, and I was like, "Who the fuck is that?" I know that face. Yeah. And I finally had an ID IMDb him, and it was like, "Oh my God, it's fucking Stewart." <laughs> yeah, like it says something about your film when the audience is saying, "You know who were the best people in this film? Anthony Michael Hall and Stewart from Mad TV." Yeah. Like, what the fuck horror movie is this? That I am able to say that sentence with a straight face. And I don't know, man. I picked up a really strong vibe off of Anthony Michael Hall. He voted for Trump, didn't he? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of think he did. And then let me tell you Not what... Anthony Michael Hall himself. I mean, I don't know who he voted for. But his character in Halloween Kills... He was just... Uh... And then everybody said, it, we were led to believe that 2018's Halloween was a direct sequel to the first Halloween film. And then they do Halloween Kills, and the police officer said, I must fight Michael Myers one-on-one -on -one because he killed my daughter. Here's a flashback to Halloween 2! Yeah. A movie that isn't in our universe! Yeah, there were a lot from two. And then, oh, these kids die. What masks are they wearing? Masks from Halloween 3, which isn't in this universe! Yeah, which isn't even in the Halloween universe. <laughs> Buster Rhymes is going to show up next, and, and uh, fucking Ant-Man. Yeah. Fucking God damn, where's Sherry Moon Zombie? Is she gonna show up now? Fuck. That pissed me off. Like, wait a second. Why are you showing Halloween 2? A clip from Halloween 2? I'm so fucking confused. The Halloween timeline. God damn, I need a freaking I need a chalkboard to explain that movie. The timeline. Yeah. Fuck! So something else I, I saw this week. Good movie. Good movie. Okay. Uh, but there was a part in it that really frightened me. Because I hate it when they do this. Uh, I'm talking about a boy named Christmas. Okay. 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 And Maggie Smith is telling these kids this story. Very a la Princess Bride. Okay, and she's telling the story, little Nick and his father in the cabin, and then the mother died, and he's taken care, of, and they're really poor, and all this, and then the father is putting Nick to bed, and tells him a story. I hate that. We're in a story of a story. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Because what if the characters in that story decide to start telling a story? When does it end? When it's does it end? It's Christmas. When action. does the socialism stop? The guy who directed A Boy Named Christmas also co-wrote the new Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking up the movie right now. I, I had flashbacks to Ang Lee's Hulk. Ew, where they did the ew, same ew, thing, ew, ew. where Bruce Banner had a flashback twice. Yeah. How the fuck ew. do you flashback to yourself having a flashback? Yeah. What kind of psychotic episode is that? What kind of sick mind operates like that? And what about this Barbara character that's obviously me? Yes. <laughs> it's a damn good role. That's not the issue. God, how can you act so casual when you're dressed like that? <laughs> uh, speaking speaking of dressed like that, Bunny, this is weird. I, uh, I, I've 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 done a I've done a lot this year, 
yeah. done a lot. I, I've I've traveled a lot. I have I've You've come far. Wings. I've come far in one year. Uh, so I am a trans woman. That's weird for me to say out loud, but it's true. I am trans. It's been quite a year for me. Yes. It's been quite a year. I go out as a woman more than I, I do I as must a admit, man I now. I did not have it on my bingo card. Yep. Uh, I go out as a woman now more than I go out as a man. Sometimes I will go out as a man, but that's only when I'm lazy. You know, because going out as a woman is just like, hey, Natasha says, hey, uh, we need to go to the store. We need to pick up this and this and this. And I go, okay, I'll get dressed. And then I've got to shave because my hair does not want to be gone. And so yeah. i got to shave. And I've, I've done really good with putting on makeup that covers up the stubbles. And i got to do my hair. i got to put in my big boobies, come up with a really nice outfit. And, and get my purse ready and then go out. And I have a female voice that I'm not doing here, but it, it's pretty believable. And I can talk with people, you know, as a woman out in public. And so that's good. But um, sometimes I'm a man in the mornings just because I'm just lazy as fuck. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not changing out of my beer pajamas and my Greendale Community College shirt, which is two sizes too big. Fuck that. That's what the parents are getting when I drop off Eleanor at preschool. At kindergarten. They're getting a messed up male Steve. But then sometimes I'll pick Eleanor up and I'll be a glammed out woman and the parents are confused. But I've finally reached that age of my life where I don't give a fuck what people think about me, so I'm really happy about that. So yeah, it's been uh, another week <laughs> defined by gender. I uh, I came out in a story time this week. I, I saw. That was it very was, difficult. I, I, found it, I found it more... Uh, Concord centric than I expected. <laughs> I've been using that it, whenever I whenever I get emotional. Now I use that clip. I used I used the the song uh, last when Eleanor had their first day of school. Yes, and I'm like, this is very emotional for me, and uh, I'm not crying. You are, and then I'm not crying. Ah, oh, so yeah. I use that a lot. Oh, that's I not get... the only clip you used. There were quite a few yeah. Flight of the Concords clips throughout that episode. Yeah. Well, there's a part of me that going through my journey towards being able to announce that I'm trans, uh, what, I, what I want to do, my bipolar disorder wants me to 100% go... Okay, here is Steve. Steve is one persona. Steve's over here. Here is Mei Lin, the female persona, over here. It's one or the other, and you have to choose. And I'm trying now to realize that, like, hey, yeah, I want to go by the name Mei Lin. But also, if someone calls me Steve, you know, I'm not going to fucking sweat that. I've been Steve for 44 years. It's fine. And also, I'm still Steve just because I am now realizing that I'm a trans woman doesn't mean I'm giving up who I have been up until the point that I realized I'm a trans woman. I'm still Steve, I'm still Mr. Steve and Reverend Steve, and I'm still a dad, but also I'm a kick-ass mom. And my new favorite thing is when I'm a woman and I'm out in public with Natasha being very physically uh, uh, affectionate towards her so people think she's 100% Lezo. Okay. That's my new favorite thing. <laughs> and it's just, oh, oh, look at those two women uh, pawing each other, and that woman's kissing the other one. Oh, my goodness, how scandalous. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. That they do that all the time now. Okay, so I, I decided to send a picture of myself as a woman to yesterday to uh, two people. Number one, 
the big family group text chain, uh, Natasha's family. So okay. I, I'm sending the text to, you know, all of my kids with phones, and then Deanna and Christian and uh, Natasha's dad and Natasha's dad's husband and uh, Auntie Lauren and Uncle Randall and all of those people. I sent them a picture of me as a woman. And then I sent my parents a picture of me as a woman. Yeah. And so uh, here are the reactions that I got. Uh, I got a bunch of positivity from the big group text chain, except for Natasha's dad, who sent a confused slash upset emoji. It's difficult to explain. He sent, sent that one? one? Of these. He, he sent one of these. You know, with like a raised eyebrow and a confused mouth, sort of. Yeah. And so, uh, Natasha's dad sent that. He sent like a confused emoji, and Natasha was like, huh, I think I have to explain this to him. And Natasha texted, uh, yes, uh, uh, she is trans. She is Mei Lin now. She, her, they are trans. And he didn't comment back. Natasha's dead. Didn't comment back. Didn't say anything. Didn't give me any well wishes. Didn't say a word. Yeah. Uh, other than the confused slash upset emoji. And my well, parents... Well, and I'm sorry. That would really kind of suck at him, I would think. Yeah. After yeah. how everybody was supportive of him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, hey, I'm supportive of uh, people being who they want to be as long as that person is me. Yeah. And then I just heard nothing from my parents, but that's to be expected. <laughs> I was also going to talk about a YouTube channel, but I found well, a way to... Well, well, when it comes to your parents, at least you know... It really has nothing to do with your gender. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, if anything, really, you know... really, what was the difference last year? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, I, I also wanted to talk about a certain YouTube channel that just popped up, but I'm going to save that for the movie. I actually found a way to talk about it during the movie. Uh... Oh, because of Blue's Clues. I found a way to talk about both the TV show Blue's Clues and uh, a YouTube channel of someone I know. So I'm really excited about that. That's for the movie, though. I'm going to save that okay. for later. Uh, so that's me. How are you, Bunny? I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, got more Dabney done. Nice. So the intro to part three is done. Uh... Although it came out hysterical, his hair is going all over the fucking place. Nice, I like that. All over the place, but like, I spent a solid day running the simulation for the hair, and then four days rendering it. It's like, that's just Jeez. it. That's just the intro to episode three. I don't give a fuck how bad it is. Dropping <laughs> <coughs> shit. Okay, we're good. I'm not. You know, so that's it. I still think I'm coming up with some really good funny bits for it. Though, yep. So I don't know when I'm going to start releasing it. Whenever I guess whenever I run out of the current breaks. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll start running them. However many is done, but then I'll probably want. But I, you know. We're also living on the edge of apocalypse. I mean, like, I could die in the time of doing 13 episodes. Yes. You know? Yeah. Especially since yeah. each one's taking, like, several weeks to do. You know? So. So maybe I'll, like, release three and then run some other, some of the other breaks and then run another Dabney or, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Probably not a solid 13 episode run. Yeah. 
Whew, I am a little bit high. I am a little bit a lot high. So I think <laughs> that's about it. Uh, I'm sure some some obnoxious things in the world happen. I I can't I can't keep track of them really. Like, did that happen this week or did that happen last week? What what horrors are this week's? You know. And, like, has anybody really noticed that the horrors haven't stopped? Yeah. Going from yes, Trump the... to Biden? I mean, it's still horrible. I It upsets me when I think of all of the things that were promised. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, free, uh, uh, Paid family leave and free community college and uh, uh, erasing student debt and uh, we we need to uh, stop detaining people at the border and we need to let in immigrants and people uh, people fleeing from war torn countries and like yeah none of that has happened. None of that is going to happen. No, Meanwhile, it's just the, the same shit. It, really, now we just have blue maga. Now we're just going to kiss their asses over everything when they're doing the same shit. And now Biden has the record of kids in cages for one consecutive month. Yeah, yeah. He's he is. He rebranded it and gave it a friendlier name, and everybody fucking accepted that. Like, yeah. hell, I'm sorry, the left is as stupid as the fucking right is. To be it upsets me. This. It upsets me that when Trump was president, so many liberals were like, oh, you're just worshiping Trump. This is the cult of Trump. Look at this ridiculous picture of Trump shirtless. Riding a horse with an eagle on his shoulder, holding a flaming sword. This is idolatry. This is ridiculous. And those people are just like, be sure and like and retweet if you love our new savior, Biden, and everything's fine and nothing is wrong. And thank goodness we have Biden. And here's a picture of him uh, looking down on us from heaven. And it's like, you're doing the same yeah. thing that... It, a lot of Democrats are acting the same way that Republicans did with Trump with Biden, and it's just upsetting, you yeah. know? It's uh, Biden is so Republican. And, and, it, it, and it, 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 it gets me so fucking angry that things like kids in cages is, is a political point and not a moral outrage. Yeah, and there was this thing... So and where it was, the I, fuck are all my friends now that were screaming about it when it was Trump? Why the yeah. fuck are they so quiet about it now? It's yeah. still a goddamn atrocity. He didn't do a fucking thing about it. He's putting more kids in cages. ICE is still running it. He gave it a friendlier-sounding name, and that's it. Yeah, and, and Trump did this horrible thing where it's like, hey, we've passed this thing. I forget what it's called. Title... 18. And Title 18 means that, hey, this is a pandemic and it's an emergency, so we can just turn away every immigrant seeking asylum, every foreigner who wants to come into America. We can turn them away, no questions asked, because this is a deadly pandemic. And all of the liberals said, this is horrible, and this is racist, and this is wrong, and people will die because of this, and Biden comes into power. And he keeps it, yeah. and then he extends it, uh -huh. and all of the people who were screaming about how horrible it was when, when Trump did that are now silent now that Biden is continuing it. Right. And it's just ridiculous that what we were supposed to do is, hey, we didn't want Biden, but he's our candidate. And the important thing is, is just to get rid of Trump. And so we're going to get rid of Trump. And then when Biden is finally in power, we can try and steer him more to the left. But all of the people that elected him forgot about the whole steering him to the left thing. And so much of what he's doing is just Trump again. And it's just fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. 
And then the Republicans, uh, all they care you about fucking is... fell asleep in the global crisis conference. World yeah. fucking conference. They had to wake him up to speak. Yeah. And then... And nobody and then, says shit about this. Yeah. Well, nobody on the left. Yeah, and, and it, it upsets me because the right is only focused on making Democrats look bad. Like, when Trump was always doing infrastructure week and always talking about his big infrastructure plan, and then there was no infrastructure plan, and, and he never passed anything, he kept talking about it, but it never happened, Democrats were like, Trump, you need to pass an infrastructure plan. And passing an in if Trump had passed an infrastructure plan, that would have benefited Trump and benefited Republicans. But Democrats were like, this is what's best for our constituents. And even though, Trump, this would help you, this will also help our, our voters. So please, Trump, pass an infrastructure bill the people need it, and Trump never did. And now that Biden is passing, trying to pass an infrastructure bill, the Republicans are against the infrastructure bill, not because it won't help their people. It will. But it's more important to the Republicans in power that Biden is hurt and doesn't pass the infrastructure bill. Yeah. Hurting the Democrats is more important than helping the Republican voters. Yes. So it's not yes. about helping Republican voters for Republicans. The only thing that Republicans have that they're focusing on is making Democrats look bad. And that's it. But what's hysterical is the Democrats ran a whole fucking propaganda campaign saying infrastructure is not just roads and bridges. Infrastructure is mental health. Infrastructure is free college. Infrastructure is, is daycare. Infrastructure just on and on and on. And what we get? Roads and bridges. Yeah. Roads and bridges. They had to cut so much out of that that it's like, what's the freaking point now? Well, but, 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 okay. This is, see now, when, when Biden first came out with the, with the first draft of the bill, Okay. Mm -hmm. I felt hopeful for once in my fucking life. Because yeah. everything that was in the bill was in direct opposition to what, what Biden was saying in the fucking primaries. So I'm like, yeah. okay, well, maybe this guy can be pushed left. Maybe Bernie's having some kind of effect on him. This is brilliant. So why are we surprised that it didn't happen? Why are we surprised that Joe Biden didn't do what Joe Biden said he didn't want to do? Yeah. And he'll let Manchin and Cinema take the fall for it so he can look like the great guy and be called the new F FDR. I but just, it was smoke and mirrors. God damn it, this fucking microphone. Stop falling. Okay, we're good. Oh, did you know hmm. we could buy followers? Oh, hold somebody on. just put in chat. We could become famous. We could buy followers. Holy shit! Wow. We can buy Optimus Primes. I want to buy Optimus Primes. I, 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 I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to investigate that into more that more later. Wow. Yeah. You want to be my, famous? I want to be famous. Let's my be older famous. brother. My older brother this week announced on his Facebook that he purchased a uh, Bitcoin. Uh oh. Yeah. He also said, and and I think that this is wonderful. He said, "I'm not sure what Bitcoin is, no, or how it works, oh. but I've just been putting money into it, and then we'll see what happens." <laughs> and it's like, God oh. damn it, you financial genius! Fuck! 
man, I've got Robert Kiyosaki over here. I've got some other famous business person. Seven habits of highly effective uh, pieces of shit. Yeah. Used to be. Used to be. <laughs> uh, uh, slick back hair. A white Ferrari, sloppy steaks. You would not have liked me back then. Okay, so now what is the thing that I planned, that I kind of meant to talk about during Bunny Versus all week and have forgotten and will suddenly remember in the next segment? I don't know. I don't that's, know. We're going to find out. The, that's the puzzle. We're going to see. That'll be exciting. That'll be a fun thing for the next half of the podcast. Yeah. I've got a lot to say about this week's movie. <laughs> I have I have things. I yeah. have things. So The Hebrew Hammer was in this. Yes. The yes, he was. The Hebrew hammer, the black, the Jewish black dynamite. Yes. I fucking love him. And then the great part is he's talking about how he saw an entire Nazi marching band of people with vaginas for heads who have to stomp on a baby. But he's an actual actor as opposed to everyone else in this movie. So yeah. he actually says it in a way where you go, okay. This isn't stupid. Yeah. You know, because he's actually acting, and you kind of believe it. Because he's yeah. an actual I, fucking actor. He was in Saving Private Ryan, for shit's sake. And, and that, that just reminded me of this, of this dream that I had where, where a, a, a guy was eating a baby, and, and there were, like, babies all over, and he was eating a baby, but it was actually a sausage. And there was a marching band, and they were all vaginas. Uh, and then yeah. there was a green Martian guy, and the green Martian guy looked at me and said, How do you feel about self-adhesive tape? It's the weirdest dream ever. But I just looked at him right in his green eyes and weird-ass mantis antennas and said, self a tape? Yes, please. I love that. And cut on that. 